ultimately what we're after is we're not after just a marketing company. We're after five new leads a day or five new customers a day. We're after $5 million more in revenue at the end of this year. That's what we're after is the outcome. I think it's really important for you guys out there to understand that from our experience, like the budget conversation is the ticket to accessing growth potential, but that needs to be something that you need to be able to digest and understand from a strategic and a numbers perspective, because if you don't, you're always going to be limiting a lack of self-belief, like what that actually looks like. The opportunity for you guys out there and truthfully, kind of your responsibility is in better communicating what you do, why you do it, where you do it, who you do it for. Is this going to give me the answer that I'm wanting? We are back, listeners and viewers, for you guys that are tuning in to this episode. It is the second conversation that I've had with Ross here from fencepost.co over in the US. The series we're talking here is Build Your Trade Buzz. And episode one, we were talking about the review revolution. Probably best that you guys go check that one out if you haven't heard it already. This conversation will likely stem in or certainly reference parts of that conversation. So yeah, in this episode, we're talking about the dynamic of ads and, you know, whether we run ads, whether we don't run ads, and we're going to touch on a few different, I suppose, concerns or observations or really just try to break down, I suppose, some of those questions that you guys might be having in relation to ads. So Ross runs an agency over in the US, works with, with home service businesses. Obviously, I run an agency over in Australia, which we work with home, biz, home service businesses as well. So we have a lot of feedback on what we see working from within the trenches. And so, yeah, I think you guys will be able to take a lot from this conversation. So let's jump into, I suppose, this topic, whether or not we should be running ads. I'd love to hear your take on this from, I suppose, the perspective of businesses and how you scope them and how you define whether or not that's going to be a good avenue or vertical for them to sort of dive into, like what that actually looks like. And then I'll offer some feedback from what we see as well. Yeah, I'm interested to hear take on this. I think this may be one that we have slightly different philosophies and, and I think that's okay. And I could be wrong about that too. But there's a number of benchmarks here for answering that question. I think the first benchmark is revenue. I mean, if you're starting your home service business, your, your trading business, and you've got $100 to your name, well, your first $100 should not go to Google Ads. It should not go to Facebook Ads. Um, there's a lot of other things that you can do to make that $100 go a lot further. And I actually think that $100 is an arbitrary number, and it probably goes a lot further up. Um, when it comes to the first benchmark to actually spending money. Um, so if we're looking at that, that's, that's one. It's like, hey, if you don't have a lot, like, don't, don't spend your money on ads. Go spend your money on everything else before ads. Um, well, why don't we dive into that a little bit? Because I don't think people really understand. And this is a conversation that we have like regularly with businesses that come along and they're like, look, we want to have a chat to you about running some ads for us because, you know, we're spending a huge amount of money on Google ads or whatever, mm. and we're not getting any results. And I say, okay, cool. What's a huge amount? It's like, well, like, like astronomical, like a thousand bucks a month. Like astronomical. Um, like, yeah, right. So like, I don't think people really truly understand the dynamic of like paid like, of budget, right? And this is a conversation that we have regularly with clients that like, they need to understand. And, and even, you know, like I was saying to you, you know, before offline, the the, the limitation that we see preventing most of our clients when they come on board with us, the limitation for them to be able to be reaching their strategic objectives is normally the fact that they're not spending enough to get there. Right. And they don't really understand the dynamic of um, operational expenses and more importantly, uh, how marketing budget forms a part of an operational expense when you're moving into the conversation of scale using paid traffic. Because often we see that businesses come into this into our world from like a referral based word of mouth environment where they're used to just getting great leads and it doesn't take a lot to close them and all of a sudden they're thrown in this nasty snake pit of cold traffic and it's a completely different conversation. And we'll talk about that conversation in the next topic where we're talking about some sales techniques. But I think it's really important for you guys out there to understand that from my from our from our experience, like the budget conversation is the ticket to accessing growth potential, but that needs to be something that you need to be able to digest and understand from a strategic and a numbers perspective, because if you don't, um, you, you're always gonna be limiting, like your self-belief, self, self -belief, 
through self a lack of self belief, like what that actually looks like. Amen. Yeah. I mean, so going back to like, what is the measure of that? I think you have to have something that is proven and tried, right? We have to have a process of acquiring customers, marching them through a, a process and then delivering a, a successful outcome. That's first and foremost. And if that's not proven, and if you don't already have customers coming through that, we shouldn't be going and doing the, the cold traffic efforts. We shouldn't go be doing the, the new paid acquisition efforts. We need people that, um, we, we need product market fit first. I think that may be where you're going. Um, well, what I, I think what I what I'd add to that is, um, and probably we're just saying the same thing but slightly different way. There's qualify like we have like very strict qualification criteria when we work with businesses that want to run paid traffic mm. based on things that they can show us they are doing in order to make sure like running the ads is the easy part. It's the easy part. But then on the fulfillment side of things and the, and handling the conversations, like that's what needs to be worked on. And, and developed from the business end because it's something that's very hard for although we you know do take a lot of that heavy lifting off over in our agency like with the initial triage and disqualification and qualification that kind of carry on but like the point is there's process that needs to exist to make sure that conversions are where they need to be to make paid traffic a viable model for that business even worth and it at any level exactly and people that don't under businesses that don't understand like the dynamic of budget it's very easy as well with google ads because quite literally you can say well this is your average cost per lead so your average cost per lead is 100 bucks and if you're only spending a thousand bucks a month on ads well, like it's gonna get 10 10 leads yeah, you, yeah you'll be lucky to get one job out of that if it's right. on a one and ten close ratio right like yeah. you can kind of reverse engineer and i think a lot of people when they come when they, they they don't understand that, so they'll say things like, "Oh, we want to be ranking for Plumber Sydney, or we want to be ranking for Plumber Georgia, or whatever it might be." And I'm like, "No, you don't. For all of these reasons, you don't, and you can't. Like, you can't compete in that space because it's just not. It, 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 you're trying to compete with these huge businesses at their game, and they're just going to eat your lunch every day." Yeah. So, I think there's got to be like a, and I think this is probably where a lot of. Um, agencies pull the wool over a lot of uh businesses eyes because they won't explain to them like they're just happy because they're getting their money yeah which yeah. is bullshit yeah, because will. like the, the, like our number one message is always like it needs to be focused on the outcome not the thing the thing is google ads the outcome is five closed jobs a week we also and if the outcome yeah. doesn't line up with what they're willing to spend in order to get it then you can't do it it's just, that's it. It's a mathematical equation. We've had this conversation with clients in the past where they're like, well, you told us it was going to be this much on ads or whatever. And now you're telling us it's this much. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. But the data's right here. <laughs> like, this we're not is how much it costs data. to get a lead. Yeah, we yeah, can't I'm, do anything with it. Sure. Well, what we were saying, we were hoping initially, that's not the case. And here's the data to prove it. So if you don't want to spend that, then stop doing this because it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You know? Yeah. And you've, yeah. And I think sometimes people, they need to like really have clear understanding, which is like, I think a hard thing to communicate in, the, in relation to what you're willing to spend to get the outcome that you want. That's right. That's right. And I do think there's a common misconception when like people come to the marketing guy or the marketing team or whatever else. It's just like, hey, I put money in. Therefore, whatever amount of money in I, I put in, I should be expecting to get whatever I, I amount of money I want out of it. And I do think there's that like uh, critical, critical mass point or whatever else where, okay, we've done the legwork to figure out what your average cost per lead is. We've done the legwork to figure out what your conversion rate on those leads that we're getting at that cost per lead is. And this is actually how much it costs to acquire a new customer. Are you willing to, do, to, to spend your $2,000 a month on that? to get it back and, and the answer a lot of times is no i like what you said about it being a mathematical equation and i think at the end of the day probably a lot of agencies i mean we're all tactically very similar but strategically are like are we are we partnering with them which is what we say we all do by giving them the thing that they they maybe don't want to hear which is the the hard news of this is how much it costs the, the, th the other thing as well which is important an important consideration and truthfully we don't really touch the job space anymore like we don't work with I pay traffic for plumbers and electricians that want to generate, you know, five, 10 jobs a day. We just, we just don't play in that game because we've, <clears throat> unless they've got that budget, you know, like it's, it's almost impossible to achieve that outcome. 
and so we just don't touch it. But like one of the things that I, I, is, an, is an important observation for the businesses that are doing it and they do it well, it's it's not it's not an obvious upfront return on initial investment because of their because there's lifetime value to consider for that customer. And we have clients. I mean, I have colleagues that will spend three hundred grand a month on Google Ads and break even on it because the lifetime value for that customer far exceeds the initial outlay in the first job that they've won. So essentially that first job could be a loss leader. They could be losing money on it up front, but they know that their system is so good because like lifetime value for that customer far exceeds it's there. that spend in the stages, right? How, how, do so, you, how do you affect it? What's, what's the magic bullet for you Can, convincing somebody that that is, that is truth? Or better yet, what type of mindset is somebody coming to you in that has already believed that that's truth? Well, I mean, there's, there's multiple mindsets. T- typically, there's a, and through no fault of anyone in particular, like it's not like a, it, it's not necessarily their, their fault that they come to us with this mindset, but it's an ignorance thing, right? Because they'll come to you with these unrealistic exp- expectations based on what they think might be right, but the reality is it's not. And we have the data here to prove it. Mm. And so, it's kind of an education curve. I mean, the whole thing's an education curve, truthfully. And especially when you start moving into a tr- paid traffic world where you're like, there's things here that you guys, that they need to understand uh, and be comfortable with in order for it to work. And those things are going to be very foreign to what they've experienced previously coming out of perhaps like a word of mouth world or whatever it might be, like right, with referrals. So I don't necessarily think there's like a magic bullet. I think it's just a case of um, like when somebody does... Like they need, like the business needs to understand what that actually looks like in order to achieve that outcome using this that model. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. And um, I suppose tying in as well the like the ecosystem of search and like when you're looking at like ads or not ads versus SEO or not SEO or like whatever it might be. Like our experience is. Um, especially today, and I'll use SEO as an example because I think anyone that's using SEO as their strategy is absolutely setting themselves up for severe disappointment. And I say that because as a standalone strategy, I think it's foolish. I think as part of a bigger strategy, it's it's useful. And all you have to do is look at the time that it can take to generate results for an organic, you know, search and listing and things like that. And when people are spending thousands of dollars a month on, and and like truthfully, we fell into this trap for years where we were selling SEO, but we weren't selling the outcome. Whereas now we sell the outcome, which is normally a combination of different services, which tie in because the clients don't care. Like they don't give a shit where it comes from as long as the phone rings, right? Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And so I think people like, like it's important that you understand is that like the listeners for you guys out there that are listening to this and watching this, like, there's there's an ecosystem at play there and there's different things that you can do in different parts of that ecosystem through website, through organic listings, through local SEO, through ad placements, through social, like all that kind of stuff, which then sort of fuels, you know, a um, like a holistic result. Yeah. I think you're onto something there too, especially when we're talking about being tactically similar to any other agency out there and like the menu for all of our listeners right now uh, to go like find marketing help is massive and expansive. But I do think what ultimately what we're, what we're after is we're not after just a marketing company. We're after, you know, five new leads a day or five new customers a day. We're after, um, you know, $5 million more in revenue at the end of this year. I mean, we're, that's, that's what we're after is the outcome and how we get there actually doesn't, doesn't matter. Obviously values aligned. But I think you're on to something. You were talking before, um, actually, maybe you were talking in the last podcast. If you haven't listened, you need to go back, uh, just about the changing landscape of uh, Google. And you feel like SEO is going to be pretty quickly impacted by that sooner rather than later, right? Well, I mean, it's, I think just the, the reality is, I mean, truthfully, you know, like what we're doing right now, you know, where we sit in front of a computer, in front of a screen, and we type into a keyboard, or even truthfully, like these mobile devices. And I, I'm I'm pulling a lot of like my um, my coach Troy talks a lot about this sort of stuff as well. You know, like this whole thing is gonna is is these things and these the days are numbered on these things. Like it's it's like we're gonna be walking around soon with 
like headphones in, or maybe not even headphones, maybe like a chip that's implanted in our ears. And we're going to be talking to this interactive model, which is essentially like an AI assistant or whatever, about things that we're trying to, that we want, right? Yeah. And like this, this, I mean, keyboards, right? I mean, like who the hell came up with this? Like it's the stupidest, like why the keys in this? Or I don't know, like, of course we're used to it, right? And, and it's part of our life now, but... I mean, if you're like me and I've been in the digital space, you know, for a long time and I'm still a terrible typer, like I can't wait to see the death to this thing. Like I will throw this thing into our fire the second I can. I hate it. Right. If it's replacement and works. Yeah, exactly. But it's going to, but it will work because you're already seeing this implementation now of, you know, things like, you know, these goggles, right. Where mm. people can, you know, you can see things and you can touch like this and you can move things around and you can talk, you know, there's the, you know, the, the, the new the new Siri release with a direct integration into open AI, like it's a game changer. It a and game changer. it's only gonna get more and more more and we're we're scratching the surface of it right now. All right. So I think the reality is like the whole landscape's gonna change significantly. And I don't know what that's gonna look like from from a traffic perspective as such or or what, but you know, the fact that you can you know, put a query into Google right now and have Google answer it without serving you the page. Like that's a big indicator of where it's kind of going. That's a huge indicator of where it's going. Yeah. Well, and I think like distilling it down to the customer and not our customer, mine and yours, but actually our customer's customer. And how are they going to experience, you know, finding a new roof, finding a electrical panel upgrade, finding a lawn service. I mean, I, I do think the lag time for those people is probably a little longer than it is for the you know the enterprise level or the you know corporate ado adopters but you're right like there's going to be some sociological civilizational shift in there but how do you how do you think that's actually going to affect the end consumer that once every four years looks for a new roof that's probably way more than once every four years it's like once every what seven or eight years well i i tell you what i think like ads or not what will never be able to be replaced and i think if you're out there watching this and you're like okay great so where do i apply my attention like ads is ads or not ads regard they're, they're both just strategies that should be aligning with an outcome that you're trying to achieve hmm. period so whatever that outcome is you need to define that because if you don't if you don't know what the goal post looks like then how the hell are you going to kick towards it right so figure out what that looks like first of all and like you know that, that's a big part of what we do with our onboarding it's like what is the goal look like here and then you've got to have that honest conversation looking forward is, okay, well, this is the model that can help you get to that. Are you comfortable with it? Yeah. And if you're not comfortable with it, then why? Is it a self-limiting belief or is it like, like what is the, what's the block here to help you get to this? Like, this is a conversation we have a lot with clients, you know, okay, cool. You want to hit 150K months, but you, you, don't, but you want to be spending, but you're only spending three grand a month in ads. Like it doesn't, it doesn't line up, no. right? You've got, to, you've got to communicate with them. Okay, this is what you need to be spending to hit this and we can do it on the model on our model but you've got to be comfortable with that right that's right and, and again it's just a number it's an equation because you know like once the formula is working you put money in the top like you just pour fuel on the fire once the equations work one thing that i think is never going to change is going to be the um and i think the opportunity for you guys out there and truthfully kind of your responsibility is in better communicating what you do, why you do it, where you do it, who you do it for, so that when people actually do land on the thing, which is probably still at the moment going to be the website, and maybe that will change looking forward, but like, okay, is it clear what we do and who we do it for? And like, is this going to give me the answer that I'm wanting? And so content essentially is the thing that is going to be very hard for anyone to make up. And I think that's uh, like, sorry, it's going to be hard for an AI to um replace like that we talk about humanizing that process right like you know talk about the things that you do like tell your story better because that will never die it'll never die being able yeah. to position yourself well and communicate why you're doing what you're doing and what time it'll be done in and what's the outcome you'll receive yeah and and traffic sources all they're doing is steering traffic towards that thing right so that thing is important because that's what's defining and that's what's unique about you and you know telling that story is something that's really like I think commonly overlooked. Well, and, and going back to commoditized services, the, the difference is how, how much better is your story than the next one? 
and part of your story is your reviews, like we talked about in the last episode. But I think the other part of your story is like the experience somebody has with you from first touch point being, like you said, a website that they land on all the way to handshake, um, to signing a proposal to fulfillment of a, of a job. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the other, um, <clears throat> and probably truthfully, the, the more significant part of this conversation, which we did kind of touch on to a degree, but um, the, the biggest bottleneck, I think, or the, the biggest roadblock comes down to process in the space of, like, and, and we're super adamant about this, like we're not going to run any paid traffic to any business whatsoever unless like we've deployed our sales and marketing system within their business because as much as it's a numbers game in terms of like quality leads coming in, it's certainly not a numbers game in the space of leads coming in that are getting churned and burnt and not taking through a process. Like you want to maximize every possible opportunity of taking that lead into becoming a customer at the end of the day. And most businesses don't have a defined process around that. Hmm. So essentially what it leads to is churn and burn. Yeah. Like leads come in and maybe they get responded to, maybe they don't, or maybe it's just a really ad hoc shitty process around doing that. And of course, that just means you need to spend more money on ads like in to, order get to get a the qualified outcome. customer. Yeah. Ooh, goodness. So process is like the number one thing. And it's the biggest, it's the biggest roadblock slash obstacle that we see of businesses of all sizes. Like we've got clients that do a million bucks a month and beyond. And same conversation when we're onboarding, show us this process for this. And there's always things that could be improved there to maximize the opportunities that lie within that traffic source. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head earlier and coming back to like full circle to when should you do ads versus when you don't. I mean, it comes down to like, have you effectively told the story and refined the process by which you would engage and serve a customer well? Because if that's not in place and you don't have the, the money to do it, you don't need to be jumping into ads i mean I'll, I'll tell you where ads in in our experience has its play it's 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 main place is in the ability to be able to forecast growth and being able to say okay well like if this model is deployed and it's working and it's on ta- and, and, and the numbers are making sense we can use that model and we will use that model to help you forecast your growth Whereas you cannot do that with referrals. You cannot, you can't forecast a business growth based on referrals or word of mouth. It just doesn't happen or organic even, even organic. Like it's, it's just not a thing. Whereas no. paid traffic will definitely help you do, you can do that. And we do it all the time with businesses. Like we say, right, tell me what this forecast looks like. What are the goalposts? And then we can reverse engineer that. Like that can be done with paid traffic. <clears throat> but that's not always as well um like not every business needs or wants that no so i, I it's think important a ton to say of businesses are coming in way earlier in the game than they probably should be coming to agencies like ours and looking to engage in some of these tools that are probably a bit further than than they need to be um at that stage of the game and so i think you're right like man these are tools that should be used at the right level of growth at the right stage of growth What's your take on folks coming in that have like developed a good referral system? They've developed a good brand. They've developed a good business and they're getting ready to tiptoe into the ad space. Again, it just depends on what their outcomes are. Hmm. Like they, they should have a good referral system and they should like that. That's, it's not like it shouldn't be ads or nothing or ads or referrals. It should be ads and referrals or ads and or, like it should be it's that ecosystem. System. It's the whole ecosystem that needs to, you know, that it should be working together in collaboration to achieve the outcome. That's right. It's not like one or the other. You know, we hear this all the time. It's like, oh, you know, we, you know, I, that same client that I talk about that spends 300 grand a month on AdWords, like he also spends 50, 60 grand a month on newspaper ads. Hmm. And most people be like, newspaper ads? Like who, who reads a newspaper today? And he's like, it's, our, it's one of our biggest, biggest returns. Is in is in like stuff that we just deem as irrelevant, extinct, right? Yeah. But it's because we don't do it because we're a younger generation. But my parents, they still do look at it, you know. So anyone that tells you to stop doing something when it's clearly working, like, is giving you really bad intel. Yeah, 
I, I like the whole yeah. conversation surrounding like tactics versus strategy and your strategy is your your pathway or your, your ultimate goal plus a rough pathway to, to get there and the tactics are the things you deploy along the way um, and I think tactics are, are good to be agnostic towards in terms of like what we're actually doing which channels you're actually spending money on what's more important is proving that you can generate a return from those dollars that you're deploying and having a, a predictable and profitable mechanism for deploying them yeah that's right and I think to get started like it's important not to go too broad like I think a lot of people that sort of like it's okay to stay stay local it's better to stay local and expand slowly than try and start large and then inevitably have to shrink you know so again i use the use the data to drive those decisions but don't get too caught up in like trying to just be so macro that you can please everyone because you'll end up pleasing no one yeah. and probably going broke in the process agreed 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 that's good. So a lot of these local, local marketing, you know, local SEO and stuff like that, it's good because it's local, you know, like it helps you plant your flag in that area as the go-to guy for whatever it is you do. And you can apply a similar strategy with ads and you should because if you don't, your budget just gets too heavily diluted and then all of a sudden, you know, your return, you know, Tanks. gets affected. And then you get burned yeah, exactly. out on a channel that maybe you shouldn't have been burned out on. Cool. Well, anyway, I reckon we should wrap this one up and we'll come back in the um, – uh, in the final episode, where we're going to be talking about um, deal closing, some of those conversations that you know, uh, and techniques, I guess, that you guys can have to, again, improve conversions on the back end in relation to um, closing deals. Uh, I have a lot of insight into this conversation, so um, certainly keen to hear what your take is as well. Um, for listeners and viewers out there, if you want to get hold of Ross, head across to fencepost.co. Uh, if you've got any feedback, uh, actually, importantly, if you do have any feedback on what you've heard today in relation to ads or not, I'd love to hear it. Um, so if you see this pop up in social or you see the email come through or whatever it might be, um, or head across to the Facebook group, let us know because uh, I'd be super keen to get your feedback on these. Um, what's worked, what hasn't, so on and so forth. Anyway, Ross, let's wrap this one up and we'll come back shortly with, or oh, well, for you guys out there next week. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> good. Third, Thanks, Thanks Matt. Thanks, everyone. New Zealand-based home renovation company, 6,593% ROAS. Sydney-based solar company, 2,700% ROAS. Hunter region-based bathroom renovation company, 5,616% ROAS. Melbourne-based building company, 13,182% return on ad spend. Adelaide-based solar company, 2,881% return on ad spend. Guys, the list goes on and on. If you're a trade-based business and you work with projects like roofing, solar, bathroom renovations, kitchen renovations, anything like that, head across to tradey.wiki forward slash pod for podcast. tradey.wiki forward slash pod for podcast. Book in a conversation. It is game changing.